everybody. Chris Cook in Nashville here. I want to do a quick vlog update for you guys today. I hope y'all are having a great day. Um, boring stuff out of the way first. Uh, my weight is pretty much hanging right at the same area that it was last week. Um, it's kind of fluctuating within about a half a pound of that 287, 287 and a half, that kind of range right there. What's really interesting though, is although the number on the scale hasn't moved, um, over the last week, especially I've really noticed body composition changing. So, you know, my stomach like that, that belly fat, that adipose tissue, that kind of stuff, I'm noticing like dips and waves on my sides and on my stomach, uh, in places where they definitely were not there before. So body recompositioning is definitely happening, which is really cool. Uh, I'm sure given a little more time that will then probably translate into, you know, more fat loss on the scale, but, um, <clears throat> that's all going well. It's really cool to see that happening and just the way shirts fit and all that kind of stuff. I was also watching a video of one of these vlogs that I had done back like, I don't know, week three, four five, something like that. And I was just noticing in my face and everything, uh, the, the places that you can see is, is that things are just trimming down more and more. Um, it's really cool to see that. So anyway, uh, all is well there. Um, feeling good and allergies are just kicking my butt here in Nashville. Um, that, you know, that messes with sleep and that messes with things during the day. But, uh, other than that, everything is great. Um, even without as much sleep as I would like because of my allergies and stuff, um, I'm still, uh, feeling good energy, all that kind of stuff. So carnivore works. It's great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about a couple of other things on my mind. First of all, <clears throat> thank you guys so much for watching my carnivore mashed potatoes video. Um, if you have not seen that, I'll put a card on the screen right here. You can go click that and go watch my carnivore mashed potatoes video. Y'all blew that video up. It has been up for a few days and that's over 22,000 views right now. And it's still climbing. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's those allergies that really affecting my throat today. Um, that video is just exploding and, uh, it means so much to me that you guys are watching that video and more specifically that you guys are, uh, so encouraging about that video and that you're so happy about it and you're expressing your appreciation for, you know, this kind of a recipe. Um, I've had a bunch of people comment that they've made the potatoes and that they, uh, the potatoes and they absolutely love the recipe, uh, that it tastes, you know, like, like real potatoes to a lot of people. Um, you know, that people are, are sort of mind blown that you can do this, you know, this kind of thing. And it just means the world to me because, you know, truthfully, I mean, like I don't eat recipes like this on a daily basis. Um, I, I do a lo little bit more frequently now because I have to experiment, uh, to create these recipes for the YouTube channel. And so, you know, we have food, so I, I use it as part of my carnivore diet. Um, you know, but most of the time, I mean, I'm eating like beef patties, steaks, uh, occasionally some chicken or some fish or, you know, bacon, lots of eggs, lots and lots of eggs. Um, and butter. And, you know, that's, that's mostly what my diet consists of, but you know, it, it kind of brings to light a little bit of something that I've noticed. And it's kind of what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, out of, out of 22,000 plus views and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments, I've had a small handful that are negative, which that's, you know, just part of being a YouTuber. Um, and I'm totally fine with that. But what I find really interesting is that, you know, s some of the comments I've gotten are from people who very clearly don't do carnivore. And it's like, it's all about calories and sticks of butter and just eat a potato and count your calories, people, and you know, all this kind of stuff. I don't pay any attention to any of that because they're just ignorant of what it is we're doing. And, and I, and I get that they don't understand keto carnivore. They don't get the proper human diet. Um, I just, I hide those comments because we don't need that kind of negative influence, especially as we're trying to stay, you know, focused on the keto carnivore, low carb kind of way of life. Um, we don't need that kind of influence, just voice in the back of our head, uh, you know, trying to, 
trying to make us question the things that we've put so much time and effort and research into and the fact that, you know, we feel so much better doing this. We, we don't need that. So I just hide those comments and don't worry about it. The other negative comments that I've gotten, and, and again, there are very few, which is because you guys are all so great, but the very few comments that I've gotten that have kind of a negative tone, a few of them have come from people who are part of the keto and carnivore community. And, uh, and <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to tell you about one in particular in a moment, but, um, the, the comment that I'm getting that I would say has happened just a, a, a few times, but it kind of is the same criticism from a very, very tiny percentage of the keto carnivore, especially carnivore side of the community is something along the lines of way too complicated, way too many ingredients, way too much time, and some version of why that's bad. So I thought that this would be an interesting thing to have a discussion about because I fully understand that the recipes that I'm doing, these are multiple ingredients and it's manipulating those ingredients to make them do certain things that they don't necessarily just easily do on, a, on you know, just their own. Like you cannot take eggs, throw them into a skillet and five minutes later out pops mashed potatoes like that. That does not work. I understand that. Um, and because of that, I, I certainly don't think that someone would eat these recipes every single day as part of a carnivore diet or a keto diet, a proper human diet, you know, any of this. Um, these are cool things we can do because we can play around with these ingredients and we can have special treats. We can have special meals. We can make something to celebrate for Thanksgiving or Christmas or um, you know, some other holiday, some religious festival, some, you know, someone's birthday, like what, whatever the case may be, there are reasons that socially and culturally as humans, we celebrate and we do special things. Um, these are great for that kind of stuff, or these are great for, Hey, I'm really in the mood for such and such da 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 da, da meal. And I don't want to compromise my health and my carnivore diet to do it or my keto diet to do it or whatever. And, oh, wait, that's right. Chris had that recipe for how I could do blah, blah, blah. And that would complete the whole thing. That's what these are for, right? So um, nowhere along the way have I ever said that, you know, these are necessary for a proper human diet or um, requirement of a proper human diet or you must eat these every day kind of recipes, whatever. So if you're one of those people that has that feeling of, you know, like, well, this isn't part of this kind of a diet. I get it. Go somewhere else with that. I'm not, I'm not interested in in your, um, your outlook on, you know, this is too hard or blah, blah, blah. Now, 99% of you, you know, you, you understand what these are for and you guys are very encouraging and you are appreciative of the work that it takes to create these recipes and stuff. And I love you guys so much because you are why I do this, but I think it's an interesting point. And I've made this point when I've replied to a couple of people on these comments and essentially I, I find it very funny that we look at these kinds of recipes and we think about how many ingredients they are and how hard they are and all this kind of stuff. And, and what I've essentially said to a few people is, you know, politely, I think we need to try to maybe rethink our perspective on what food is like. You know, because, I mean, a lot of the carnivore community especially, but even the keto community, you know, we're into things like local farming and regenerative farming and, you know, high quality hand raised this and that and whatever and all these real ingredients and stuff. And, I, and I'm all for that. I think that's all fantastic. But to the people who think that my stuff is too complicated and takes too many ingredients and it's too much work and all these kinds of things, where do you think all that stuff comes from? Because I think we live in a society now where we are so screwed up with our belief of what real food is supposed to be like and the effort that it takes to create food that we, I mean, we can't even see straight. If you had 
let, let's take ground beef, right? Because I, someone made the comment, they were like, I just eat my beef patties and my eggs and my bacon and that's it. I don't need any of this complicated stuff. That's fine. Enjoy that. Have you ever tried to make ground beef? Do you know the work that goes into creating ground beef? Now, we have this perspective that this is just easy because we go to a store and it sits there in a package wrapped in cellophane and we just buy it and go home and cook it in three minutes and we're done. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy the fact that I can go to the grocery store and have stuff readily available, right? I think that's fine. But think about the perspective that we have as very blessed people to live in a society where food is so readily available, especially optimal food. The reason starvation foods and survival foods exist is because there's a lot of places in the world, they're trying to just not die. And I think it is a real elitist perspective to think that the whole world should just have access to ground beef and pre-cut steaks and perfect food all of the time that we can just cook in three minutes. And therefore, some recipe like this isn't worth the time, in your opinion, because it's harder than just grabbing some ground beef. Have you ever tried to make ground beef? Let me tell you what you have to do to make ground beef. If you're one of those people that thinks that my recipes are so hard and complicated and ridiculous and a waste of time. Let me tell you what it's like if you actually had to make ground beef. I grew up in farm country. So first of all, you have to raise the cattle. And believe me, cattle farmers are up early and up late. And they work hard to raise cattle because that's what it takes. Um, <clears throat> especially cattle that are going to be beef cattle. Sorry, guys. Got interrupted there. Um, <clears throat> so cattle farmers are up early. They're up late. They work super hard. So you have to raise the cattle. Then when the cattle is properly taken care of, then it has to be killed. And it has to be, usually the way we expect our beef now to be is drained of all the blood, right? So they have to hang it and drain it and, you know, everything else. <clears throat> Even if you don't do that, you know, you still have to hang the thing up and you have to butcher it and you have to cut it all down into pieces. Then you have to take all of those pieces that aren't cut into nice steaks and aren't nice, you know, chunks of beef and all that kind of stuff and, and you know, extra connective tissue and all that kind of stuff, fat, whatever. You have to grind all of that, okay? Now, if you don't have an industrial machine, you don't grind that. You take a knife and you chop it and you chop 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 and you, chop and you do it until your arm is about to fall off. That's how you make ground beef. And then we go to the store and we see it coming out of an industrial machine being put into a styrofoam plate with cellophane wrapping on it. And we go, oh, well, carnivore is easy and simplicity is the whole point. No, I don't think that's the case. Carnivore is easy because of our society and what we expect our food to be. Carnivore is simplistic in concept, which basically means if it's not an optimal food being an animal product that is as clean as you can possibly get, don't eat it. Stay as close to zero carbs as you can. That's carnivore. The simplicity is in the perspective, but that doesn't mean that you can't do really cool things with those ingredients for the culinary enjoyment of it. Now, again, I'm not saying you have to do it every single day, but that is what carnivore actually is, is to enjoy those ingredients that are good for you without having any of the other things. Now, the thing that I think most people really get tripped up on is one, the ways that I do these recipes, yes, they take more steps and a combination of multiple ingredients. There's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. And if you don't like that stuff, that's cool. That's fine. You eat whatever you want. You don't have to eat my stuff. But more importantly, yeah, there's a lot of steps to it and you don't have to do that all the time. But that's not violating what carnivore is. In your mind, if you look at this and say, oh, well, it looks like what I remember being is mashed potatoes, and it takes a lot of steps to get it there, therefore, it's not good for me. That's, that's a completely backwards perspective. You're missing the point. The point is that some people enjoy things like that. 
lot of people enjoy things like that. And you can have things that taste really good, remind you of things that you enjoyed, you know, whatever. And not that you have to do it all the time, but maybe that's the difference between someone who says, yes, I can stick to carnivore and someone who says, no, there's absolutely no way because I would give up too many things. Now, ideally, sure, we could all eat steak with salt and we'd drink water and that would be the end of it and everybody would be happy and healthy. I agree, that would be fantastic. But guess what? The human brain doesn't work that way, um, at least not in the beginning. And moving in that direction is not an overnight process for many people. And things like my recipes that I'm creating, that makes a huge difference for someone who's thinking about doing this or someone who says, yes, I can or no, I can't because of look of what I would have to give up. <clears throat> so anyway, I think the perspective on everything should be instant gratification is also a part of the carnivore diet right now because we are so used to everything being readily available because of boxed foods, packaged foods, microwave foods, all that. We have a lot of things that help us. We have gas stoves and electric stoves and microwaves and you know, grills and all this kind of stuff. People didn't used to have all of this, right? I mean, they had to take a long time and go through a lot of hard work to get their food and cook their food. I mean, have you ever tried making a fire by hand? Like, I grew up in the country, right? And I did the whole Cub Scouts thing as a kid. That's tough, you know? It's hard to do this kind of stuff. But we do it because, one, it's either good for us, or two, we enjoy it. That's why I make these recipes, and that's why so many people love this stuff, and that's why so many of you are so kind and so helpful, and I really appreciate all of your encouragement because there are a very, very slim number, but there's a few, of the naysayers that just either they don't want to do it or they can't do it or whatever the reason may be, and rather than live and let live, you know, people like to take the approach sometimes of, well, I have to make everybody else exactly like me because if it doesn't work for me, then obviously it won't work for you and therefore I'm better than you are and it, it's a whole thing. So I just wanted to let you guys know kind of like that kind of stuff is out there and if someone, I, I don't care if they say it to me, I'm, I, you know, whatever, I do my thing. But if somebody is saying these things to you, if you are using these recipes and then you are feeling like you're doing something wrong, Everybody's proper human diet is on a spectrum and it looks a little different for everybody. Carnivore <clears throat> does not just have to be steak, salt, and water. If you can do that, that's fantastic and that's going to be super great for you. But if you want to use these other things too, and if that helps you stay strong on carnivore and your health improves and you feel good, that's great. Do it and enjoy it. And these recipes are here and I'm creating these recipes for people just like you. So you can absolutely do it. The one comment I was going to tell you guys about, and I did a little uh, Facebook post about this. Someone commented on my mashed potatoes video and said, this isn't mashed potatoes and da da da. And they had all of these different critiques and they said, they don't even look like real mashed potatoes. I thought that was really funny because I actually found a picture of, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Joel Rubichon, but he is a famous French chef who during his lifetime had an unprecedented 31 Michelin stars, okay? I mean, just pre considered probably one of the greatest chefs, if not the greatest chef to ever live. Um, other celebrity chefs talk about how great he was because he was so good and had such an amazing palate, you know, whatever in the chef world. One of his most famous dishes was a type of mashed potato that he did out of a, a potato called a rat potato. And they're these small fingerling sized potatoes that are in France. They're very expensive. And he made these mashed potatoes and it was part of what got him another Michelin star or several Michelin stars. I don't know. Incredible, incredible, but very complicated in concept. Um, very simple, but also very refined in the way that he did it. Now his plating of course is different than mine, but if you look at the texture of his mashed potatoes, his, his lot potatoes, and you look at my mashed potato recipe, just, just visually, I think someone, if they were plated the exact same, would you'd be hard pressed to tell you which one was which. Um, I'm not saying my recipes are worth Michelin stars. I'm saying visually, I don't think anyone would know the difference. So I just thought that comment was really funny because I literally put, I took pictures and put them side by side and I was like, I'm really confused. <laughs> it doesn't look like mashed potatoes to you unless you grew up with just terrible potatoes that just didn't look anything like this and you think that's normal. 
Um, anyway, I just think it's funny. I would just like to encourage everyone to think about the perspective we have on what food really takes, what 99% of the world does to feed itself, the work that goes into good food, and that it's okay to enjoy a recipe that has multiple ingredients and culinary refinement, and maybe there's some steps, maybe it takes a little time. The more you do it, the easier it gets, the less time it takes anyway, but that's okay. Carnivore doesn't mean you can't have that too. I and mean, yes, carnivore is very simple in its concept, but you can refine it and you can do fun things with it and be a foodie and also enjoy carnivore at the same time. And if you don't need that, I think that's wonderful. I'm glad, but there's some people that not even that they need it, but it just helps and it's fun. And I know for me, it's very fun. I can eat meat and salt and water all day long, but it's nice to be able to do this stuff. And I'm having a blast doing it because I love you guys. I love doing this for you. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for blowing up my mashed potato video next week uh, or this coming weekend. So for you guys for this next week, I've got the carnivore potato salad recipe coming. I'm so excited about this. You guys, it's even better than the mashed potatoes, at least in my opinion. I think you're going to be really excited to try it. So anyway, that's what I got going on. I love you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. My links are in the description for Patreon and the shop. If you want to support the channel, that helps me so much when you do that. Um, even if you don't do that, if you leave me a thumbs up, put a comment below, let me know you're here, share the videos, tell people I'm here and I'm doing this and just try to help somebody realize that you don't have to give up everything to be on a carnivore diet and you can do these really cool things and they are still good for you because we're intentional about what we eat, but we're refined in the way that we choose to do it when we do a recipe like this. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for giving me uh, just the strength and the purpose that I have here because it's all about you guys and I just love doing this. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. Eat your meat, love your life, and I'm going to see you guys in the kitchen.